our responsibilities in the roadmap project were, were to conduct uh, cost effectiveness analysis on the potential alternatives to antimicrobials or interventions to reduce their use in livestock production. A good starting point is always to identify what alternatives are being used and their knowledge on, of their impact in production context. And we conducted a scoping literature revision to identify these alternatives to antimicrobials and the interventions to reduce uh, their use in real production context and also assess uh, their impact in different uh, outcomes such as production, productivity, uh, epidemiology such as like mortality or disease incidence, antimicrobial usage, antimicrobial resistance uh, amongst others and assess these impacts uh, through a qualitative lens. So this uh, literature revision allowed us to identify the measures taken under field conditions to mitigate the antimicrobial abuse problem in livestock production in aquaculture uh, and the consequent antimicrobial resistance, uh, as well as understand the expected impact at the farm level from a qualitative perspective. And in general, the majority of the studies reported an equivalent or positive impact of the tested alternatives or interventions. In particular, uh, vaccines, feed and water management, probiotics, bioactive molecules and peptides, plant-based products and farm management decisions are either largely positive or equivalent in their impacts. Contrarily, applying new therapy protocols uh, using probiotics or relying on regulation or simply stop using antimicrobials altogether without replacing them with an alternative health management tool displayed some negative or bidirectional effects. And these are important considerations when highlighting the need for change in antimicrobial use practices. Interestingly, the review did not identify some specific therapies as alternatives to antimicrobials that have been recent hot research topics, in particular those using bacteriophages and peptides. As this review was meant to capture studies uh, conducted in real production context, it could indicate that these technologies are still at a testing stage or not yet widely available for usage in animal production. And could, you know, different reasons could be behind this, like uh, high production, production uh, high costs of production for these antimicrobial alternatives or even regulation issues. With regards to the livestock production species, uh, we do think that's important to highlight that dairy cattle was the most widely studied population. Uh, and this also can be due to different uh, factors, such as uh, higher interest in this research uh, population. Uh, however, we wonder whether such observation could be in part explained by the structure of the different uh, livestock sectors, each having particular levels of integration and or cooperativism. Uh, it is well known that the swine and the poultry sectors are highly integrated businesses where the dairy sector is not. And uh, dairy sector, the farmers, uh, have sort of a role of price takers uh, and could be struggling to make a profit and thus uh, more open to establishing partnerships with researchers that could help them uh, better manage the health of their animals uh, and hopefully increase the prof profitability of their production units. Uh, also, that research institutes are commonly linked to dairy farmers, so that could be an additional uh, ease to access data for answering or addressing research questions related to antimicrobial views and, and resistance. But, but still, um, if data is available uh, in the private sector, there's no ease of access to it, and this calls for a closer partnership with the private sector, in particular with the swine and the poultry sector. Uh, another qu quick note on uh, the location where studies were identified. So Europe and North America accounted to nearly 80% of the total number of publications. And this is of concern as it can indicate an even research efforts or funding across the different regions of the world, particularly given the heterogeneity in antimicrobial usage and legislation to regulate antimicrobial usage in livestock production. If we had to select some take home messages, we would definitely highlight that there is no one size fits all solutions. Uh, where, where is it? Because we found that uh, there are different alternatives uh, that can be used and they, they can actually have an equivalent or a positive impact uh, under a real production context. But potentially these are 
um, influenced by farm specific uh, factors uh, and are context specific. Also, there seems to be a lack of research in different regions of the world that still represents a lot of the biomass, livestock biomass in the world. And this is quite troublesome uh, as it seems that we have no light on, on these uh, regions. In particular, uh, Southeast Asia uh, has a high density of livestock population and we didn't, we weren't able to capture a lot of, a lot of papers uh, for that region. Uh, so again, this calls for further funding and further research on these, on these topics. Uh, and again, so on, on a final note, on a positive note, the alternatives and interventions that were identified in this Copeland literature revision seem to have uh, seem to have the potential to improve farmers or to help farmers uh, to reduce antimicrobial usage and even improve the profitability of their production systems. Mm -hmm.